Let's have a look how the ShowNet admin tool works. The ShowNet admin tool is necessary to configure the ShowNet laser mainboard that can either be inside a laser or as an external device. The ShowNet admin tool works with both of them. You can even use the ShowNet admin tool to administer the old type Micronet Slim interfaces. Let's open the software. Um, if we have properly configured the ShowNet device, it is listed here. It can be possible that there is multiple devices listed here and there's a count how many are detected. Uh, you can also see the IP address that has been given to the very device. In this case, I chose auto IP as IP determination. So you can see it's kind of a random IP address that has been negotiated between the computer and the ShowNet device. First of all, we're on the tab manual control. This allows for general checkup of the laser and you can ha you have some basic features you can use with a laser. For example, you can project single beams in the three base colors. If you use a uh, ShowNet Pro interface, you have six color channels available. If you use this slider, you can project a laser beam, a single beam in the very color. And if you maximize that to 255, which is 100%, you get the maximum power of this very color. You can also check if the scanners work on a basic level, basically, but it can be checked by using these sliders. You can X and Y move the beam you just showed with these sliders here. The ShowNet interface can also be used with DMX. So it can send DMX and it can also receive DMX. If you have an external interface, you need the DMX adapter to work with it. Or if you have the ShowNet Pro interface, the DMX connectors are included already. What you can do is you can t send out test signals on DMX. So you can use the sliders to send out test signals if the device is set to, to output DMX. Or you can also read in this table if there is any DMX commands coming in, which is quite helpful. Uh, but it depends on the operation mode you're in here if you can actually receive DMX or not. This just needs to be set according to the user manual of the show net. Let's move on to the next tab, which is firmware in this case. The firmware tab shows you a lot of information about the show net you're actually using. First of all, you have the IP address, then you have the MAC address, which is a unique address for this hardware device. Then you have an information about the bootloader and you have an information on the firmware. This is a very important information because the firmware you have on the show net determines which user manual corresponds with this device because we can use different firmwares for having different features in the show net and this can also apply to this admin tool so be careful with the firmware always make sure that you have the correct firmware corresponding with a user manual and of course it's recommended to always update to the latest firmware to have all the new features. But of course, you're not forced to do that, but you can do it and it's highly recommended to do so. Then there is an interface ID, which doesn't matter to you normally. It's not necessary to know about this. Um, and then there is an information on the license. In the past, there have been show net devices that have only the show editor license and some other licenses in here. You probably also find Phoenix licenses in the old Micronet Slim interfaces. Um, this determines what licenses are applied to this uh, show net and which software the show net can be used with. But of course, and this is important, uh, show editor works with all ShowNet interfaces, so no matter if it's written here or not, it will work. Normally, Show Controller should work as well. 
Then we have a dongle status, which means dongle status is available. Um, this is not necessary uh, to consider anymore. This was an important feature in the past where we could have kind of security features on here. These are solved in a different way now, so we don't need to respect that. There is the option to apply a firmware update by using this button. Flash.lff means if you click on it, you can select a firmware. In this case, you see I have the latest firmware, which I can apply. You can download the firmware from the website that is stated under this video. So you just click on it and there you get uh, information, also manual and the latest firmware. And by choosing this, you can update the firmware let's do it so you can see how it works you see now uh, it's switching to reprogramming mode so it's blocked now you cannot use it anymore the reprogramming mode is active um, so the firmware is now written to the memory of the show net and now it says it's been successful which is good um, we still need to wait until we get a message that tells us what we need to do next now it says okay please disconnect the interface from power supply and restart this is important do never ever unplug the power during the flash process otherwise the show net will be broken this is like with a bios update on your computer do not switch off the computer during bios update the same here so if i click okay the show net admin tool closes because we cannot use it anymore until we have unplugged the power and replugged it in. Let's just do that. Uh, it's the same if you have a show net inside your laser as laser mainboard, it's just switching off the power of the laser and switching it on again. So it's uh, pretty simple. Let's open up the admin tool again. Of course, nothing has changed because we already had the latest firmware. We just redid the flash process. So you don't have any change to the values here. But if you have an older firmware and you apply the newer ones, the firmware status will change here. There is another option, which is the license code. This is nothing you have to uh, really deal with. Normally, there is options where we can provide you a certain code and this can change things and behavior of the show net. But normally, you're instructed separately how to do that. Let's move on to the next tab, which is SD card. SD card is the internal memory of the show net. And as you can see, it contains a lot of ILDA files. What you can do is you can store standard ILDA files to the show net interface, which is a super versatile feature because all these ILDA frames can be played back later, either by DMX or ArtNet in standalone operation mode, in, de in demo mode, or also uh, sound to light. So there is many, many different uh, ways you can use these ILDA frames and this ca it can completely be customized. So what we can do is we can select ILDA frames on the left hand side and then we can transfer them by clicking on this arrows to the right side, which is the SD card. The transfer can take a while. So be careful if you select really big files it can take several minutes so if you for example have a 50 megabyte uh, file set that you want to transfer it can go about 10 minutes or something like that so be careful with that it, this is due to the nature of the show net which is a um, microprocessor device it's optimized for laser output but not for file transfer it doesn't have any operating system on it like for example a raspberry pi or something like that so the device the show net is purely for high performance laser output that's why the file transfer can take a while but this doesn't make any difference in the way you can use it uh, you can see that there is only a gray files they're grayed out because it's not ILDA files you can only transfer ILDA files but I can show you this by transferring a file back and forth we can also transfer it to this side and you see the file has appeared here and then I can also transfer it back to the other side it's a very small file that's why it was really really quick but this is how it basically works you can also um, invert the selection and then it selects all the files you can delete them here or you can also choose to format the SD card in the device which is not recommended but you can do it you can also just simply select all the files 
and delete them. The same is here, you can invert the selection and vice versa. Let's have a look at the next tab, which is settings. Settings is the most powerful tab we have in the admin tool because you have different options you can choose from. First of all, let's have a look at the DMX operating mode. Um, DMX is a very powerful uh, control for lighting. For lasers, it wasn't that common, um, but it is very powerful, especially if you have more than, let's say, 10 laser systems and you really want to use them with DMX, you can create astonishing effects. Um, there is two different DMX modes. One is the DJ mode and the other one is the professional mode. The DJ mode has some pre-made animations with it, for example, rotation. If you go for the rotation um, uh, slider, um, you have automatic automated rotation and it goes faster and, and slower and something like that. The professional mode doesn't have that. The professional mode is especially made for professional uh, DMX control with uh, effects generators, for example. So, for example, the rotation fader, it's just the steps from uh, zero degrees to 360 degrees. And you can use these steps with your effects generator to create a custom made animation, um, which is more versatile than pre made rotation effects. That's why we have the professional mode. The professional mode also has um, additional. Um, color balancing features and also uh, supports RGB uh, color wheel support. So there's, there's uh, many, many features that are special in the professional mode, which are not necessary for many applications that are very basic. But if you really want to control the lasers in a professional way, uh, choose the professional mode. And now I show you how to switch the show net to professional mode. We select the professional mode and to really activate it, we need to store the data to the show net. I click store data and I get the message. Do you really want to write the configuration to the device? And I confirm with yes. And it also says, okay, do not disconnect the power supply. And it can also take some time, probably, yeah, some several, several seconds, probably, and wait for the success message. This is important. Do not disconnect the power during this process. Let's wait for it. It's again like with a firmware update you've seen previously. We're switching to the reprogramming mode. It's now active and uh, it's been applied successfully. So let's still wait for the success message. So take some time. Now we have it, the success message. Click OK and the ShowNet admin tool closes. I unplug the power of the ShowNet. I replug it back in and um, we can again connect to the device. Oh, we were too quick. It didn't boot up yet. Here we are. Back to the settings and you see professional mode is set now. There is more options that you can select here. The most important probably is the way you want to address the internal DMX effects. If you standard uh, want to address them with DMX, with a normal DMS, a DMX uh, three pin or five pin uh, cable, then you're fine, well set with DMX input. But if you want to use ArtNet, you need to switch the setting here to ArtNet input. Again, if you change things here, Hit store data and it will be stored. I don't do that again. It, it delays us too much. Then you can also set the SD card scan speed, which is the standard scan rate. All the frames on the SD card are played back. This especially applies to standalone operation or DMX operation and also for the automatic mode. If you control the show net with DMX or ArtNet, you have another fader with which you can control the scan speed of the the frames this is this is pretty pretty uh, handy especially if you have um, a different different frame types on the SD card it can help to really make crisp projections and uh, reduce flickering and all this so this is but this is the standard setting you can do here then of course we have the option to to specify how um, the the show net should act with DMX in signals. Um, there's different options, like you have the DMX in, ArtNet in, or you can also merge the signal. But 
you probably wonder we already have the same in here what, what's happening it's two times dmx in this one here on this side is for the internal dmx effect this means for triggering the sd card triggering the effects on the sd card this setting is for the software so what you can do is you can remotely trigger for example show editor or show controller software via dmx and you can remotely call the features of the software with it so this is a different way of controlling the lasers um, you kind of indirectly control them with using the dmx import and then you trigger the software and the software outputs to the laser again um, there is another thing which is referring to dmx out as i initially said on the manual control page you also have the option to send dmx out signal and this can happen in various ways for example it can be the laser show software sending dmx out signal for example for controlling a fog machine or some basic lighting effects but it can also be uh, dmx in so it's kind of a dmx through thing which only applies to certain kind of applications normally you don't need that same artnet to dmx and um, is an option to um, transfer artnet signal to dmx so like an artnet node you can merge several signals and you can also um, yeah kind of uh, use artnet player feature but all these features are uh, normally not necessary in a very advanced features uh, most users just leave this part and this part like it is so these two drop downs stay as they are and you normally just select if you have dmx or artnet here then there is another tab which is about uh, this is just about the company that uh, launched the admin tool so this is just for information there is nothing you can set there so this is it basically for the ShowNet admin tool. This, as you can see, is the version 1.33. Probably there will be future versions with more advanced features, more options you can control. Uh, so check for future videos that explain the more advanced features of potential future tool versions of the admin tool.